Reading the periodic table isn't an easy thing to do, but there are steps to make it simple and another part of everyday life. The table has periods and groups. Periods are the horizontal rows on the table, and groups are the vertical columns on the table. There are three main parts to the table. There are the metals, which are green, the nonmetals, which are blue, and the metalloids, which are pink. Metals, which are green, are good conductors of electric current and heat. Nonmetals are elements that are poor conductors of heat and electricity. And the metalloids, which are pink, their ability to conduct electricity varies with temperature. The next thing on the table is the families. Families are all of the vertical columns in the table. The families are the alkali metals, which are yellow. There are also the alkali earth metals group, which are blue. The whole big box of green is the transition metals group. The pink is the boron family. The blue stripes is the carbon family. The green stripes is the nitrogen family. The pink stripes is the oxygen family. The purple stripes are the halogens. The red are the noble gases. The brown stripes are the lanthanides. And the red stripes are the actinides. Now that you know of periods and groups, let's break down the table into specific elements. First, the atomic number specifies the amount of protons and electrons. Second, the element symbol is phosphorus. Third, is the atomic mass. This is the weight made up of neutrons and protons. To find the amount of neutrons, take the atomic mass and subtract the atomic number from it. In this case, we have a decimal number from the mass. If 30.97 minus 15 equals 15.97, we have a number with a decimal. To round off, if the decimal is above 0.5, round up to the nearest whole number, which is going to be 16. If it is less than 0.5, you would round down to the nearest whole number, which would be 15. In this case, it would be 16 as the neutrons. With the information you now know, you could draw a Bohr model with knowing how many protons and electrons are in an atom by atomic number. The element symbol is what you are working with and the atomic mass is the weight of the element. If we wanted to draw a Bohr model to understand where some things are in the atom, we need to know where the valence shell and valence electron are. The valence shell is determined by what period the element is in. This is the first period. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. If it is in the first, there will be one valence shell. If it is in the second, you will have a second valence shell with two main shells, but the outer shell is the valence shell. The group number, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, means there would be eight valence electrons, seven valence electrons, six valence electrons, five, four, three, two, and one. The last thing that needs to be covered is an isotope. An isotope is where there are atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons. Think of it like Ford Mustangs. There are the Mustang GTs, Cobras, GT500, V6, V8, and others. Mustang GTs are the most common, yet there are just a small amount of Cobras. The GT has a certain type of power, and so does the Cobra. Think of it like that. 
Thank you for watching. Have a good day.